Hello everyone, in this video I'll be going over the problem matched matchsticks to square. I'll be introducing the problem, explaining the solution, then talking about how you actually implement it. So in this problem, you are given an integer array where the, the numbers in this array represent the length of a matchstick. And you have to use all the matchsticks to make a square. And you cannot break any matchsticks, but you can link them up. And you have to use each matchstick one time. And you return true if you can make a square and false otherwise. So in their test case, with two matchsticks of length one on the side here, and three others with length two, you can form a square like so. So the problem setup is pretty straightforward. So now let's go into the solution. So the first thing to notice when um, thinking of the solution is that there cannot be very many matchsticks. So this actually hints at a brute force solution where you just try picking every uh, combination of matchsticks for a current side. That was actually my first solution. And as you can see, it times out, but barely. It nearly passed all the test cases. It is very close, but you just need one um, small optimization, which I will um, talk about later. But let's first talk about how to actually, um, how this brute force type of logic will actually work. So we know we have, um, let's say, this many matchsticks in our array. So like one, one. Uh, two, two, two. So what we can do is we can figure out how long each side should be. Let me just close this. So if we sum up all the sides and divide it by four, uh, so that would be eight, then divide that by four because there's four sides, we know the length of each side should be two. And of course, if the total length is not divisible by divisible by 4, you know you can just automatically return false. But if it is divisible by 4, we need to do a little more uh, work to figure out if we can make four side lengths each of length 2. So what we can do essentially is go through our array of options and choose a matchstick to use for our current side. So let's just say we grab 1. Then we will recursively call that again. Uh, now with a new variable saying that our current side has a length of one. Then we'll have our array here, of course, which we need to pass in. And uh, we will also keep track of which ones we took because we cannot take, um, we can, each matchstick can only be used exactly one time. So we'll just use an array or something like that to make sure we cannot take, um, make sure we don't take the same matchstick again. So in our next uh, iteration of this recursively, we'll have these to choose from. And of course, we'll just try picking um, like each of them and see what happens. So we'll try picking the first one. So that gives us another one. So we'll call this function again, but with um, our current side length of length two. And in our next iteration, when we call it, we know that our current side has a length of two. So we can um, essentially say, yep, we figured out we can make one side. Now in this, um, in this path, like this exploration path, we can uh, say we are done calculating one side and we only have three more sides left to find. And so then eventually, if it's possible, we will have one path in this uh, sort of tree kind of um, DFS where we'll have no more sides to make because we've have, we'll have made four sides all of length two. So to give a better visual about what um, our recursive function would look like, 
with with this given array, let me just delete this. With this given array, we would have something that looks like this, where we choose uh, one and then we choose one again, and then we complete one side. And there's also the case where we choose one and then we choose uh, two because we'll choose two. And that in that case, we will just automatically re return false because we know that this side has a length of three and there's no way to make it shorter. So there's no way we can make four sides of length two if we go down this path where we combine a one and a two. But we will search down this path and here, no matter what choice you make, you'll, it'll always be correct. So we'll make another side length of like two, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll actually just find the answer right away. And we, that means we found one uh, possibility that will work. And once we find one possibility, we can just automatically return true. We don't need to work on finding any other possibilities. So um, this one is not actually that great of an example to uh, test out. Um, so I'll just kind of make up an example here. So let's say we have um, like some array that looks like let me just think of some random numbers here. So let's just say we have like two, one, four, five, um, seven, three. Uh, those are some random numbers. Um, I don't even know if this is possible, but uh, what our um, function that will search if it's possible will essentially look like this. So let's just sum it all, all up first. So uh, three, six, ten. 22. Uh, let's just add another 2 here to make it divisible. So our sum will be 24, and we'll divide that by 4. So we know we're looking for side lengths of length 6. So now we'll just start picking numbers in a random order. So we'll pick like 2, and then uh, we'll pick 1, and then 4, and then we'll realize, hey, we can if we pick 2, 1, and 4, our side length will be greater than 6. So this does not lead to a valid uh, solution. Then we'll try picking um, 5. So 2, 1, 5. That doesn't work either. And um, I don't think any of the remaining options will work. So then it'll go 7, etc. But then instead of picking 1 as a second, it'll choose 2 and 4. And then it'll realize wow, we've completed one side because we've made one side length of length six. And then what it will do is it will uh, then keep on going because it completed one side, but um, just have a variable keeping track of how many sides it has completed. So then it'll go from two, four, and then it will um, choose another random number, so one. So now it'll know that the current side length is one, and then it'll choose another random number, five, complete another side, etc. So it'll essentially, uh, what it's essentially doing is it's just permuting a random order of choosing these numbers. So let's just say with a smaller, let's just say the, there's only four numbers. So it'll permute a random order like uh, one, two, four, five, and then it'll go through and basically sum them up. So it'll be like, this will belong to the first side, this will belong to the first side, and then dot dot dot, let's just say there's more numbers. Let's just say each side length will be three in this hypothetical example. So then you can realize, okay, so when selecting the match six in this order, we'll complete one side right here, and then we'll um, try to find another side. So this essentially is an order of choosing match sticks, and it'll be like, um, it'll essentially see if um, like this order, will it create uh, four sides that are of equal length at the end? So that's essentially the solution. So now let's look at how it's implemented. So <coughs> um, first, we will just sum up all the the num the length of the matchsticks right here. And if it's not divisible by four, we can just return false right away. And otherwise, we'll perform our search here. And this recursive function will obviously 
take in the array of matchsticks. Uh, the current sum, which represents the current length of our side that we're building. The target, which is the length of a side if we were to form a correct square. The number of sides we have left to form. And um, this is the small optimization I was talking about earlier, where we can use an index to help us uh, search through less possibilities. I'll explain uh, more details on that later. And we'll also initialize a Boolean array here, which represents the matchsticks we have already taken, so we won't take the same matchstick more than once. So now let's go into our recursive function and what it'll look like. So if we only have one side to make, we know we can automatically return true, because if we have formed three side lengths that are the perfect square length, we know that because this total is divisible by four, whatever other matchsticks we have left, however we arrange them, it'll be able to complete the final side length. So if we have one side to make left, we will uh, return true. And otherwise, if our current side is the ideal length, we will uh, keep on searching but uh, for a new side. So this new side will have a length, start off as a length of zero because we, we need to build that side up. Uh, subtract one from the number of sides we need to make and set index back to zero because index will represent essentially what numbers, what matchsticks we need to uh, look through that we can have a choice of picking. So uh, the reason why we want this index is because uh, when we want to build a new side, so let's just say we start off building one side of the square here, we'll of course want to start at the beginning of the matchstick and just try picking random combinations of the matchstick. But the thing is, um, this will help, uh, using an index will help us avoid double counting because if we choose this as one um, matchstick that'll make up our side, then we'll have, let's just say, in our permutation, some other, some ordering where we choose two and then we choose four. So we'll have a matchstick of length two here and a matchstick of length four, which is making up one side. But when we try to build this same side, when we pick four as our first matchstick, we don't want to start at the beginning again, because if we choose four and two, that's just recalculating what we already calculated, but in a different order. So as you can see, the four and two, that, that's the same thing. We don't want to calculate that because it doesn't matter what order we arrange the matchsticks in, just as long as they will make the length of the side the same. So when building up one side, we don't need to start at the beginning every time to uh, choose our matchsticks. Once we choose a matchstick, we know we only need to check um, choosing matchsticks that are later on in the array to complete our side. Uh, so if we uh, grab four as a matchstick, um, let's say to start off, we'll know that um, to try to complete this side length, we'll need to just uh, grab some matchsticks from uh, later on in the sequence. And we don't need to worry about using any matchsticks in front of it to uh, complete the side because we know we've already tried those possibilities. So, uh, that, yeah, that's why when we start off choosing a new side, so when we initialize here, we know we still need to find four sides, and we're, st we're starting to build up our side. Our current side length is, of course, zero, and we'll start at the very first um, matchstick that we have. And then whenever we want to, whenever we complete one side and are building a new side of the square, we will just reset that to start at index zero, because then our new side will have a different ordering um, that we can choose. So that's just a small optimization I did not implement earlier, where um, I just started off at zero every time, but then that's um, much more inefficient because you're double calculating these um, lengths here that you only need to calculate once. So, um, 
Otherwise, if we're just continuing to build up our current side, which is this case right here, it's not one of these cases, then we will just go through starting from our index and check all the matchsticks. And if we can take that matchstick, um, so this is the flag of matchsticks that we have taken. So if we can take that, it's a false there. So if we can take that and uh, this matchstick might be a, might result in a way to make our current side equal to target. So of course, if our current side length is like um, this long and um, this current matchstick is far too long and we want to only make a side length this long, we don't need to uh, check it out. We can just cut it off like what we did here. So if this might be a possibility, then we will try uh, choosing it for our current side. So we will set that to true. We'll choose that. Then we will go down that path where we um, used that matchstick. So uh, let's just say we chose two. We will go down that path where we chose two as our as a matchstick for building our um, current side. And then we'll pass these uh, regulars in. We will add, um, this will represent that we built up our current side a little bit longer. And we will increment our in index to uh, i plus one because we know we will only need to, if we choose four, let's just say we will only need to look at the indexes after it to continue building our current side. So if going down this path uh, leads us to a valid solution, we can just return true. And um, because we return true here, once we find one path, let's just say go down all the way here. In this test case, obviously there is no valid solution because seven is too long, but let's just say hypothetically we found one solution and it's true. Uh, we went down all the way in our uh, DFS search and we, we found a possibility that works. We can just um, then, since we return true here, all of our other functions will just automatically return true. We won't explore anything else. And we will return that, yes, there is a way to make a, a square out of these matchsticks. And then um, after we explore the possibility of using this matchstick for our current side, uh, which is this um, recursive function here, we will just uh, set that to false because um, then we will want to represent that we haven't taken it for our current matchstick. So um, when we explore down this path, we'll use two as um, one other matchstick in our current side. Uh, we will uh, first set that to true because we're using two, but then once we go all the way out, uh, we will set that to false because then we're not using this current matchstick. So yeah, so in, in summary, this essentially, what this essentially does in English is if this matchstick might work, let's take it, explore what happens if we take it, then we put it back and try taking another one th that we haven't taken in case taking this one um, doesn't work. And so, of course, if we've um, done that for all the possible arrangements of matchsticks, we will we know there is no answer. We'll just return false. And yeah, so just explaining it one uh, this this part here. This will be when we start the search. We will have the matchsticks. All of our um, matchsticks will be available to take because all of them are false. We haven't taken any matchsticks yet. Uh, our current side length is zero. We'll start at the first element, the first matchstick. We have four sides to make and our target length is um, the total length divided by four. So yeah, I'll just submit this to prove that it works. And yeah, so this solution works just because we have this little optimization here where we start at this index and we avoid calculating these um, duplicate permutations. So yeah, that's about it for this video. Um, the solution for matchsticks to square. I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you very much for watching.